everybody, my name is James, this is my girlfriend Tamara, and welcome to our vlog series as we go travel through Southeast Asia to Thailand, Vietnam, and Laos. And this episode is episode number eight. And if you guys are watching this episode, that means you guys are very interested in doing the Ha Jang Loop. And this will be the ultimate guide to the Ha Jang Loop. Yes, so about a week and a half ago, we finished doing the loop ourselves, and it was absolutely amazing. We finally have had time to process it all, um, and now we are here to give you all of the information that we wish that we had had before we started the loop. Um, how to get there, what to bring, what you need, what to watch out for, um, and how the experience is overall. Um, this is going to be a two-part series, so this will be part number one. And we're going to start off with just answering your questions. And the first thing you probably need to know is, how do we get to Ha Zheng? So there's only kind of one way to get to Ha Zheng, which is the sleeper bus. So the sleeper bus takes about seven hours from Hanoi to Ha Zheng. And this sleeper bus ranges from prices depending which one you pick. But we chose which one? Um, we actually got a good deal. Like they start around $15 for the lower end and it can be up to $30 per person. We actually got one of the nice VIP cabin sleeper buses for only $18 a person. Um, and it left about 8.30 at night and arrived in Ha Zheng around what, two or three in the two, morning? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you get there early in the morning. A lot of people, um, just rest for a few hours, rent their motorbikes and go off. Um, that same day and start their first day for the Hajing Loop on their motorbikes. Um, we actually decided to go ahead and rest for that full day um, and figure out the bikes and everything and get a good night of sleep and then start early the next day. However, we'd probably recommend a different time for the sleeper yeah. bus. We recommend that if you're going to do the Hajing Loop, like book the sleeper bus early in the morning. So when yeah. you get there in the afternoon, you have some time to settle, get comfortable with the bikes, get everything all set up and then get enough rest before you do it the following day. Yeah, so we arrived at two in the morning and did it the following day, but we could have just arrived at two in the afternoon, set everything up, had a good meal, and then left the following day the same way that we did um, without an overnight crazy bus. So that's just our suggestion. Um, the, the best and only way though is gonna be one of those seven hour buses from mm -hmm. Hanoi. All right, next question. Where do you stay and where do you rent your bikes? All right, so these questions are together because they're kind of one and the same. Um, there's multiple hostels in Ha Zheng and all of them rent the bikes and probably make things pretty easy. We can only suggest the one that we stayed at was absolutely amazing. It's called QT Hostel. We really loved them because they had multiple options. We're about to go over that with you too. Um, and they went over everything with us. They had a map. They sat down with us. They told us where good lunch stops were, the best and most amazing worth it sites to see along the road. They asked how many nights we were going to take and suggested the best routes. They told us about this amazing shortcut that's not really on the routes, but it was easy to find and cut out a bunch of time and it was beautiful. Um, so do your research, find a good hostel and just trust in them. That's the way to go for where to stay and rent your bikes. All right, so next question, how do you know what bike to rent? So where we rented at, at QT Hostel, there's three different options. There's scooter, semi-automatic and manual. We both had riding experience uh, prior to this. So we actually chose a semi-automatic, which was kind of great. But there are other options that you could use depending on your riding experience and how comfortable you are on the bike. Yeah, people who aren't comfortable may um, try to levitate towards the scooter because you don't have to deal with any shifting or gears at all. But I will warn you a little bit, um, the scooters are going to be less powerful when you're like going up the hills. You can't downshift um, and around corners and stuff. So we really are happy with what we chose with the semi-automatic, or at least I'm happy with the semi-automatic yeah. um, just for having that power and being able to shift but not having to deal necessarily with the clutch. I was feeling nervous because it had been so long since I'd ridden. But also in the semi-automatic, be aware without the clutch, you can't pull it in and have that no contact if you ever need for safety. So you're always going to be in gear. And sometimes it was a little jerky. Yeah. 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 Especially when you downshift or upshift. If you're ruining a motorcycle before and going to a semi-automatic where there's no clutch, it kind of feels weird because the back end would kind of fishtail. And when you downshift or upshift, if you're not accordingly to the speed, it, you, the back will, will go like this. Yeah, so, so that's one reason that we were really happy with QT Hostel too and that we gave ourselves that extra day in the beginning yes. is they let us 
drive them not far but around in circles and mess with like turning and stuff and we got to feel more comfortable with our bikes and if we had wanted to before we actually left the next day we could have switched to a different kind of bike yeah. but we were happy with what we got we um it was me james and my brother nicholas we each rented our own semi-automatic bike and it ended up being a perfect for us so the most important question do you need your international driver's permit while doing the hajang loop Okay, so this is a tricky question because the answer is yes and no. Um, so legally, yes, you need an international driver's permit to both rent and drive your motorcycle here in Vietnam at all. Um, and it also specifically has to have the motorcycle class on it. So if you, in your home country, like for us in the States, I have gotten my motorcycle permit. So on my regular driver's license in the States, it says motorcycle. So I legally could rent and drive them. Um, even though my brother and James got their international driver's permits, they didn't have the class M, so it was practically worthless. They didn't even need to get it. it was, there was no point in getting it. It made no difference. What's nice about it is that the um, hostel still will rent them to you. Um, it's tourism, it is what it is. We noticed the place next door wouldn't, so not every place will, but you can find a way to get a motorbike without the international driver's permit, but it is technically illegal. Um, there are checkpoints outside of the town of Ha Zhang, sometimes in the morning, not on the rest of the days on the loop, apparently just on Ha Zhang outside of the city. If you leave early enough, you can miss before they set up the checkpoints or QT Hostel does have the option that they will drive you out of town past the checkpoint and then let you go off on your own so that you can continue the loop without your driver's permit. That doesn't mean you're not risking the possibility of getting stopped by a cop. Yes. So if you do get stopped at this checkpoint, there are these things called bribes <laughs> that these officers will take. And depending on the officer, it can range from anything from 1.5 million to about 6 million dong. Yeah. So it all depends. Yeah, we heard multiple people got stopped. We were lucky and didn't get stopped at all. And yeah, that's the price range that we heard for the bribes. And we also did hear that it was negotiable. Um, I think you should just always remember that you're in another country. Um, those laws are there for a reason. It's dangerous on the road if you're not careful and don't know what you're doing. And these are their citizens and they're, they're here every day. Um, we just need to be respectful. So if you get stopped, um, don't be afraid to negotiate, but be respectful and you know get you on your way with a little bit of money <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said guys we're gonna start our vlog with the first day by showing you exactly what we've seen on the first amazing day of the loop right babe yes so enough talking guys let's start the vlog so we started around 7 7 30 we had to leave early just because we wanted to beat the checkpoints if you go around later on the day there will be police checkpoints so we got out of the town early and now we're in the first city just to get some coffee <laughs> and we're freezing cold, really freezing cold. My hands are frozen. We have gloves, but... <laughs> yeah, so we're still on the first leg of our journey and um, yeah, it's going to be an amazing ride. Yeah. And we're going to take you guys along with us here on the Hai Zhang Loop. Yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> really excited. And so far it's been beautiful for the past... Uh, 10 15 minutes we've been driving yeah it's been really pretty and they say it just keeps getting better and better so it's gonna be good Ooh, i'm gonna turn on the gopro soon and yeah. you guys get to check it out too yeah so. so from this point on we'll be turning on the gopro and showing you guys some footage of exactly the first day driving through ha Zhang and all these turns so come along with us guys yeah here we go oh like by the way there's nicholas right over here A little over an hour into the Hajang Loop and on the side of this beautiful road we saw some 
swings and other cool stuff. So we're just gonna pull over and check it out because that's why we're here, right? So let's go. So guys, we just got done with this amazing viewpoint. Highly recommend. Yeah, it uh, was 20,000 per person, less than a dollar. And it was beautiful. It had like three swings. There's really like scary bridge that you get to walk out on. Oh, it was so beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> definitely if you guys make it on the first leg, stop by this place. It's amazing. Yeah. But look at that view. With this view, come on. So now we're gonna we're gonna get back on our motorbike and head keep going keep going and yeah this is by far amazing still yet guys yeah. you guys I'm gonna show you this so right now we just made it to Heaven's Gate yes it's like the first main stop that everybody talks about um, it looks absolutely beautiful there's some stairs across the way that go to like another viewpoint we're probably gonna check that out too but right now we're just taking it all in amazing guys just simply amazing look, look at that look at this man Nicholas, how are you feeling? Pretty alright. Yeah? <laughs> oh man, guys. No words. Look at that. Look at this. Oh man, beautiful day here on the loop, guys. First day, day one. I'm loving it. It's so fun. It is, it's guys. It's so fun. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh man. So we're going to show you guys exactly what we mean, how amazing this place is, guys. Check out this. Alright guys, right across from the Heaven's Gate viewpoint, we found these stairs. It looks like it's going to be pretty cool because it's at the top of a hill, even bigger. So let's go see what we can see. Oh, we're here. It wasn't that long guys. Well, it took maybe like... Five minutes or less than that. Whatever. A little out of breath, but we're here and it's worth it already. Yes. Wow. Amazing.
right guys, so after an amazing lunch, where are we baby? We're in Tam, Tam Sum Town. Mm -hmm. Yes. And right after this, about 15 minutes outside of town is one of the caves everybody says is amazing. It is called Lung Kui Cave. So <laughs> we're going to go check that out. It's supposed to be really cool. You like wear a headlamp and you get to explore it because it's not really well lit. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Um, and then after that, we'll only have about an hour until we get to Yin Min, which is going to be our first stop of the night. We don't have anything booked there, but we've marked a hotel or two. We're just going to go um, check out the town. We're making great time, so we'll be able to hang out there and see what's up. It's only 11, 15 a.m., so we should be there by 1 o'clock, you know? So yeah. see you guys then, guys. <laughs> The shortcut right now between um, where we had lunch, uh, the cave actually, and Yen Min. So it's about 40 more minutes until we get to Yen Min, which is the first place we're gonna stay the night. Uh, they told us about the shortcut. It's like up in the mountains and kind of zigzaggy. It's really beautiful. Um, so we're gonna kind of cruise this and see what views we can see along the way.
God, you guys can tell how amazing, amazing that entire day was on day one on the Ha Zhang loop. It's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. So you guys still need to tune in and check out part two of this vlog because part three, day three, was even better than day one. Like, I think day three was both of our favorite days. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so day three was amazing. So make sure that you check out part two of this vlog. It's also going to have lots of good information for you. We're going to talk about what to pack, um, where to stay, and how to figure that out, um, how long we wish we had spent on the Hajing loop, like how much time we suggest that you set aside to do this loop. And last but most important is our individual final thoughts, feelings, and tips that we think you should take with you so that you can have the experience of a lifetime on the Hajing Loop. Yep, and if you guys made it this far, thank you guys for watching. To our new subscribers, we love you guys very much and we love your continued support. So guys, please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys on the next episode and part two where we'll go over more things about the Hajang Loop. <laughs> See you guys on the next one, guys. Bye.